Hey everyone, this is Paul Gale from paulgalenetwork.com and thank you for joining me today for Video Game News. It is May 26th, 2021 and these are the top stories of the day. So I wanted to kick things off with a rumor and that's regarding Monster Hunter Rise possibly getting some Legend of Zelda 35th Anniversary content in it very soon. This would include characters from the Legend of Zelda series, enemies specifically, being integrated into Monster Hunter Rise the game. Maybe not literally a Lionel, for instance, being put in the game, but Lionel accessories or a Lionel costume swap, something along those lines being placed on Monster Hunter Rise's own creatures. And costume sets from characters such as Ganondorf and Link from both green traditional outfit and Breath of the Wild blue outfit being able to be worn by your own characters in Monster Hunter Rise. This is a rumor for now, but really cool, and I see it more likely than not happening. Capcom and Nintendo have a good relationship. Monster Hunter Rise, or I should say Monster Hunter as a franchise, has had similar cross-promotions with various franchises over the years. You obviously have Monster Hunter included in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Monster Hunter Rise is exclusive on Nintendo Switch. You've got Legend of Zelda celebrating 35th anniversary. This is a game that's close to 7 million right now. As of this moment, it has definitely sold over 6, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's closer to 7 now than 6. So really it makes sense, and the places that I'm hearing the rumors from are on the more reputable side, so I think that this is going to happen. At E3 would be a good place to reveal it. Could it drop sooner? Possibly, but I would say wait till E3, which is very soon. We're looking at 17 days uh, to go, so stay tuned for more. Once it actually happens, if it does, I will announce it here on Video Game News with PGN, and we'll have fun checking it out together. Moving on, speaking of Nintendo, Pokemon Company announced today that Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Pokemon Shining Pearl are coming out November 19th this year. We knew that it would be a 2021 release, but now we have confirmation that it's November 19th. It's pretty cool because these two titles come out the 19th. My son turns 7 on the 20th, and my wife's birthday is on the 21st, so not bad, right? You know, this game, this pair of games was met with quite a bit of criticism for its overall look and whatnot when it was shown off back in February. It seems to be a faithful remake done in a kind of a chibi cute look in the overworld map. Uh, the characters of course changed into a little bit more, not adult, but a little bit more teenage proportional look when they're in battles and stuff like that. But a lot of people were not blown away and I could see why people wanted it to be bigger, more expressive, especially after playing something like Sword and Shield with an open world and a greater concept. You know, how come it doesn't look like that? Well, there was arguments back and forth in the community that, you know, the game wasn't even made internally. It was outsourced. Just how much of it had an internal impact, outside impact, and so forth. But you know what? That trailer dropped and it was the first and only footage we saw in February. It's coming out in November, okay? So first of all, that's several months apart to really increase the visuals. But if you think about it, that trailer that came out in February, it's probably from a build of the game from like December when they edited it together and such. So really you're looking at maybe 11 months of extra development time that will go into the game from when it was shown off to when it comes out. Something around 10 or 11 months. That's a lot of time, especially if the game is already close to being complete, to really maximize how much they can out of the title. Because even though the graphics are on the simple side in terms of, you know, its sophistication in the world and animations, you really have a lot of time where you could add in extra details while keeping the frame rate solid, keeping the resolution high, and just really work on the textures and work on the polygons. So we'll see, but for now, November 19th is the release date, and I'm looking forward to it still. I have fond memories of Diamond and Pearl back in the day on the DS, so 
I would like to check these out and hope for the best that they really took advantage of the time and delivered some awesome looking titles. And also in Pokemon news, Pokemon Legends Arceus or Arceus has been released or announced, I should say, that it's having its release this upcoming January 28th. Now we knew that it was going to be a quarter one 2022 release. I think most of us thought probably like a late March or maybe even it would get delayed to May. Well, not only is it a not a March title, but it's actually coming out in January. That's just two months and a week or so after Diamond and Pearl. So it looks like Diamond and Pearl will really be able to enjoy the rest of November's sales, take advantage of all the holiday sales throughout the month of December, and then just really do a good job for Nintendo Switch for the first four weeks of the new year. And then boom, this is a game that a lot of people are really behind, myself included. This is my most anticipated Pokemon project that we know of. Legends Arceus looks really nice. And once again, the first and only footage we've seen of this game was from that February presentation. That probably means that build was from December. So you're really looking at 13 months approximately of development time that could go into the game from when we saw it to when it comes out. Assuming the game has already had a couple of a year long development cycle, two to three perhaps, getting the game to look as good as it did. We have to assume that the vast majority of the story, the fundamentals, the geography, the terrain, the languages are in place. And in the last several months, it's fine tuning things. The more of the game that's already complete as of that 13 month mark, the better. Because that means it's just time to really tap into the Nintendo Switch hardware and optimize it. How good of a resolution can you have? How high of a frame, make, frame rate can you maintain consistently? Is there any other texture work that you could do? Of course, you need things like the script finalized if it's not already. Uh, if it's going to be having multiple languages, lots of live dialogue, you have to have that in place. But assuming most things are done, it's a lot of time left in the development cycle to just hone on the game's graphics and you know, otherwise gameplay assets, visual department, make it as nice sounding as possible. I think the game looks great. It's going to be RPG, it's going to be action, it's going to be different than traditional Pokemon games. The fact that it's coming out so early in the year makes me think, could we get another generation mainline Pokemon title like that following November, November 2022? That's a lot of Pokemon back to back to back, right? We got Sword and Shield, which came off the heels of Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu. After Sword and Shield, we just got Pokemon Snap. New Pokemon Snap, Pearl and Diamond in one year, a couple months later, having Arceus, and then the following November, another mainline game? That might be too much. So that's just a thought in my mind that came up. Could we get another generation Pokemon game? You know, fall 2022? We'll see. But for now, I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, there were people that said, ooh, the trailer looked a little rough, but hey, I'm not worried. That's still far away from when it was shown off to when it comes out to really tighten things up. Plus, there's always the rumors going on of the Nintendo Switch Plus. And if the Nintendo Switch Plus is a thing, you're going to have these games like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, Pokemon Legends Arceus, available on all Nintendo Switch platforms, Nintendo Switch Lite included. But take advantage of the Nintendo Switch Plus. That Okay, this is the full vision of the creator. This is what Nintendo, this is what the Pokemon company really wanted to achieve. You know, no limitations. Got it at 60 frames per second like we wanted. We have it at 1080p or 1440p like we wanted. It runs on all the other models and it runs fine, but you might be looking at 30 frames per second. You might be looking at 720 or 900p, but overall still definitely playable on the systems that are you know 90 million or so uh, by the time these games come out. But anyways, that's a good amount of talk for Pokemon for now. Finally in video game news today, this is 
pretty exciting. Epic Games released a 15-minute look at what their Unreal Engine 5 could do. Now, I'm not going to play this for 15 minutes. Instead, I'm just going to skip around and show in real time this is what was captured on Xbox Series X. Take a look at that. And on PlayStation 5. Okay, welcome to the brand new UI in Unreal Engine 5. While a lot of the same features and functionality that you've come to know in UE4 are still present in the new UI, we've added several new systems that put you at the center of the experience. For example, the content browser can now... Quite impressive, right? ...to create sharper, more stabilistic time of day. You could go over on the YouTube channel and check out Epic Games and watch the full demo if you wish. But I wanted to give you little glimpses here and there of our character walking around. You'll see her stepping down soon, and you'll see that there is no foot displacement. You know how in some games, particularly on steps, a character's foot will kind of be halfway in between, or it'll have this weird angle where it doesn't quite match up. Well, here, the game is sophisticated enough, the engine is sophisticated enough that they could have the foot properly mold around a hill or around um, a step. So they went into a little bit of that. They showed off, showed off the lighting effects, the animation. They go into the ease of development and the audio sampling and how they could do so many multiple layers of audio and have the laser beam that's coming off of this uh, beast be very distinct and have layers to it. It's going to be a very good tool for a lot of developers. Metasounds bring the power and flexibility found in material editors to audio creation, providing fine control for authoring procedural game audio. With a lot goes audio into video game development, doesn't it? And a rich audio function library, Metasounds give unprecedented control over sound effects and runtime applications. Using Metasounds, we built the ancient laser attack out of a combination of sound samples and synthesized audio. There you go. That's what I was talking about earlier. Here you have a little bit of gameplay footage. Rewind the smidge. I like how tangible the world feels, how the heroine feels. The effects that went into taking down the Guardian. It's pretty cool stuff. If you want to check out the whole thing, like I said, you could go to YouTube.com and you could check out Epic Games and see what they have to say in more detail about it. But overall, I wanted to give you a little bit of a glimpse. And I think this upcoming generation is going to be fantastic. Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 are more powerful for the current year of 2020 and 2021, respectively, than PlayStation 4 and Xbox One were for 2013 going into 2014. You know, the tech is better realized for this 2021 than those systems were for 2014. So I think not only are they just more powerful systems in general, but closer to what the highest end of PCs can do in the time. And especially when you look at the PS5's SSD, you know, topping a lot of top-end PCs and Xbox Series X with how many teraflops it has, you know, it's no slouch. And I think we're going to get some really gorgeous games. I can't wait for top studios to really show us what they can deliver. Um, it's going to be an exciting generation. All right, that's going to do it for today's video game news. Let me know what you thought of. The Pokemon announcements, my Monster Hunter rumor, um, crossing fingers on that one being true. I think it's going to end up happening, but we'll see, hopefully by E3. And let me know what you thought of this uh, Unreal Engine 5 sneak peek. All right, that's going to do it. Take it easy, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.